Now, one of the cool things is you can actually measure the center surroundedness of a ganglion cell while it's working, okay? I wouldn't recommend doing this to you or to anybody else you have any care for whatsoever. But basically, the way you do recordings is here, here's a uh, schematic of a neuron. So it has dendrites where they receive inputs from the synapses. And uh, when the, the inputs are correct, it will generate a spike, a firing down here. And then these terminals uh, impact the next nerves that it's in contact with. And if you were to put an electrode right over here, you would occasionally see these spikes. And neural coding, we tend to refer to as the more spikes per second is a higher level. So we've gone essentially from analog to digital, right? In an analog system, the amount of the voltage tells you how high it is or how low it is. In a digital system, there's something discrete that tells us, okay, you know, there's 15 ones and two zeros, that's a higher number than all zeros or et cetera. Well, in the, in the neural system, the way we do is we look at how, how often is the neuron firing. And you can actually go ahead and do this. This is a picture of a, uh, a micropipette, uh, an electrode, getting ready to record from a neuron. So you do these with neurons that are still living, right? This is why I said you wouldn't want to do this to anybody you cared for, right? And what you can do is you can then put different kinds of stimuli at different locations in the eye and see what happens, all right? And if you do that, you can find areas. So here we have, when it's just black, this neuron doesn't do things very much, okay? But when it's white in the middle, okay, and black out here, all right? And, and what this is, oh, by the way, this is time going this way. So this is when the the spot was turned on, you can see when it goes from the background, this is called the background activity, when it goes from the background, when it turns on, this thing starts firing crazy, and then you turn it off and it stops again. Okay, fine. But what's then cool is, if I then turn on a really bright spot, okay, nothing happens. It stays just like my background. And in fact, if I want to turn the cell off even more, I turn on just the outside and I make the middle black. And here what you can see is it actually just shut down the background altogether. And then when I turn the thing off, it wakes back up again and then returns back to its normal. So this is an on cell, okay? That is, its center is positive. Exact opposite cell here is negative, okay? And both are found in the, in the retina. The other thing that's found in the retina are ganglion cells whose size in terms of their response is different. So there are ones for very small, for medium and larger. And your system is actually tuned to have more of a particular size. And that tuning is what gives you this phenomena. So again, this is going to be a function of how your monitor is calibrated. All right. But the uh, contrast sensitivity function. So for me, so what this is, is this is a sinusoid where the frequency gets, goes up this way and contrast goes up as you get further down, all right? And the question is, where can you see the bars? And for me, I can see the bars kind of like, you know, like that, okay? So the question is, why can't I see this stuff here, but I can see the stuff there for the same level of contrast? The answer is, my retina has more and a better tuned uh, receptors at this size frequency than at this size frequency. This phenomenon that you're seeing is a function of what goes on inside your eyeball. And that can be graphed out looking like this. Two things interesting about this graph. First is this is a function of frequency. And um, here they use different luminance levels. So they make it brighter and or brighter. And, and it's sort of how sensitive you are. And then something, and for the uh, PETA folks amongst you, please ignore this, you'll notice that the human data and the macaque, macaque is a type of monkey, are very, very similar. Now this is done, of course, without doing anything to anybody, right? You just ask them, what do you see, et cetera. But what this data show is that the vision system, the retinal vision system of the macaque monkey is really quite similar to the human. So if you were to do experiments on primates measuring physiological things, remember those electrodes? We have reason to believe that what we learn there is the same 
would apply also to the human system. So when you have psychophysical experiments like this, it shows you the similarity between uh, human and macaque.